Evening, Phil here from the Echo, um, reflecting on a, a, another disappointing night for Sunderland actually at Ipswich. Um, we're going to start doing something a little bit different, which hopefully you'll enjoy for our YouTube channel. We're going to take your questions on social media at full time after the game. We're going to discuss them. Hopefully I can give you a little bit of insight, whether it's from the press conferences or things I hear. Um, and yeah, just discuss all the major talking points. Now, what's normally going to happen is my super talented colleague James is going to make it look really good. We're going to do it at the ground um, and hopefully you'll get a bit of flavour of the atmosphere. Tonight, um, for logistical reasons, it's coming from my hotel room in Ipswich. So apologies for that, but um, hopefully you'll still find it interesting. Um, first question is from at 1973Mackham, who says, will we ever sign a striker? Um, I suspected that the striker would be the first question and it was. I think some do want to sign a striker in the January window. Um, I think it's a major issue because, you know, the, the timing of Tony Mowbray's dismissal obviously came at a time when he said that he didn't feel the strikers were ready. And I think the expectation was that one of the big challenges the new head coach would be given was to come in and get the strikers in the team and get them firing. Um, you know, Michael Beale actually said sort of ahead of the derby, he implied that he was going to give Nazari Russin, you know, an extended run in the team. So it was a surprise when Job played up front tonight. Um, it's not that I don't think Job's a good striker. I actually think he's got a real knack for it. Um, but I think everybody kind of feels that it's time to give somebody a run, and I can totally understand that. In terms of the January window, Sunderland definitely want to sign a striker, and I'd be really surprised if they didn't. But I also think there's an acceptance that actually they signed four strikers in the summer. And what you don't want to do is just add another player who needs time to settle. You know, Hamia and Mienda, I think, were long-term additions. Burstow and Rusin, especially Burstow, were the two who, you know, were expected to come in and make an immediate impact, and that hasn't happened. Um, and I think it's more about getting a player of that calibre. The question is, if you want to sign an experienced striker, A, there's going to be a lot of competition in the Championship, and B, it's going to cost a lot of money. Are Sunderland willing to do that? From my understanding, I think they're willing to push their wage budget a bit, probably for a loan signing. I don't see them spending you know, a huge fee for a proven number nine if there's not a lot of resale value. So my answer to your question is, hopefully we will sign another striker, but I think it has to be a proven player because I don't think there's a lot of value at this stage um, adding another sort of young long-term sign into the mix. Um, so hopefully that answers your question a little bit, um, although I think that was as much frustration as an actual question. Um, next question is from Chris who says, I have five subs, why don't we use them with 20 minutes left? I thought it was strange today that, that Barr I actually thought did really well. I thought that was a good selection from Bill in terms of putting him on the right wing. I thought he looked really good there earlier in the season and I was surprised that he sort of moved around the pitch again when his recent cameos and I thought that knocked his form. I thought he deserved to start because he was really good when he came across um, on against Newcastle. And I really enjoyed his performance today. I thought he held up the ball well. Obviously got a really good assist for Jack Clark. Really promising signs. So it was strange, I think, to bring him off for Aushish. Now obviously, you know, if Aushish then scores that massive chance, maybe someone go and win the game. Um, but I thought that was an unusual an unusual sub and listen, you know, um, it obviously didn't work out how she's missed a big chance and then gave a free kick away from which Connor Chapman scored the winner. So, yeah, definitely sort of feel that frustration. It's really interesting that there's a huge difference between Beal and Mowbray. Mowbray used to make a lot of subs very early and actually used to get criticised for it from people who said it sort of affected the rhythm and the fluidity of the team. And um, Beal is very much the opposite. He tends to make only a couple of subs and tends to leave it quite late. The one thing I would say in Beal's defence tonight is, is I suppose the game was fairly finely poised. Um, and as I say, if she scores that, and Sunderland are potentially on the way to a bigger way win. That's not to say that Sunderland were brilliant tonight. I thought Ipswich deserved the win. Um, but it's definitely an interesting one moving forward. And I think, you know, the big concern for me tonight was that actually I thought Ipswich were the team who were going to go on and score again in the last 10 minutes. Sunderland did eventually bring strikers on, um, but didn't actually create any chances. So I think that's a big concern moving forward. Uh, we've got a question from Graham. It says, why is it the same players every game? We really need an experienced striker, an experienced centre midfielder to come on board. I think... At the moment, there aren't actually that many options. I think the injuries to Roberts and Dak have really exposed that lack of depth. Um, and when I say lack of depth, I mean, as I think you're referring to, Graham, like players who can impact the game immediately. Um, and I think your point about an experienced centre midfielder, I couldn't agree with more. Could not agree with more. I think Neil and Equit are two really, really talented players. Neil, in, in particular, I think he's been outstanding this season. I thought he was the best player on the pitch tonight. He didn't get man the match because Ipswich won, so obviously an Ipswich player is going to get man the match. But I thought Neil was terrific. I think there's a big problem with the balance on this side. I think they are crying out for a natural holder midfielder who can release Equit to play further forward because I just don't think that's his game. I don't think he's a holder midfielder. The one thing I would say is I don't think it has to be an experienced central midfielder. I don't think it's about age or appearances. I just think it's about someone who relishes that side of the game. 
He relishes sort of mopping up. He relishes shutting down counter-attacks. He really relishes the challenge of coming and getting the ball deep and starting attacks. Um, I think it's been a big haul in this squad since Corey Adams got injured. I think Dan Neil did incredibly well to adapt to the role last season. But for me, obviously an experienced striker, I think we all agree, is the priority in this window. But coming up right behind, for me, is an experienced centre midfielder. I think it's massive. A uh, question from Hannah, who says, Bill was against it before he started. The performances aren't winning for aren't winning fans over, so how long do you think he'll stay? Well, listen, Sunderland have given Bale a two and a half year contract. Um, so they are very, very much wedded to this decision. They think it's the right one. And they think Bale's an outstanding coach. Christian Speaton's on record saying that. Um, the one thing I will say is that still at this stage, it's early days in terms of, I think Bale hasn't had a huge amount of training time. Um, so that's definitely something that I think it would be overly harsh to judge him too much from what we've seen in games. What I will say as well is that I think so far it has been frustrating because the issues that we've got in the final third, I think are actually getting worse at the moment rather than improving. I think some have become more dependent on Jack Clark. I think you know they look less fluid rather than more fluid. Um, it's a bit of a tough watch at the moment. It feels very stodgy. Um, and I think that's a huge challenge for Bill in the weeks ahead. And obviously we all know he's battling against the fact that Mowbray was very, very popular. Um, so listen, I think it's it's way too early for those kind of discussions at the moment, and I think it's actually right that Bill gets a lot longer to prove um, he can improve this team on the training pitch. I don't think he's had a huge amount of time, and let's be fair as well, he needs some help in the transfer market. You know, we said that with Tony Mowbray, um, and I think that's true of Bill as well. Um, and the last question we've got from Stephen at Stephen says, "Is there a model, or is it an excuse to spend as little as possible?" Well. To be honest, my I think Sunderland invested quite a bit in the last summer window, to be honest. Um